standing by. And we're live. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of the KDHX podcast. I should say special Black History Month uh, edition of the KDHX podcast, Tangazo. I'm your host. I'm Hank Thompson, the same guy I was the last time that we got together. And uh, I'm telling you, we've got a really, really stellar class, uh, a stellar panel of uh, elected officials and uh, political commentators that are going to be discussing the issues, the serious issues facing African-American communities throughout the St. Louis metropolitan area. Uh, real quickly, we're here to talk about legislative efforts that are happening in both Missouri and Illinois state capitals to bring about much needed police reform. We're gonna talk about COVID vaccine uh, re, uh, COVID vaccine distribution, I'm sorry, and uh, to an already underserved minority communities in both in both uh, states, Illinois and Missouri. Other issues of importance that we want to address include the violent crime that contributes greatly to black flight to the suburbs and again, both sides of the river. And that's an issue that plagues us uh, dearly. We also have to be concerned about politics in St. Louis City, such as the importance of the election of the next mayor of the city of St. Louis, how important that is to the future progress of the St. Louis region. And we also want to take a look at the perceived lack of respect from white progressives, white elected progressives, I should say, for the black body politics. And that's been demonstrated to some by the actions of the St. Louis County Council and its efforts to deny African-American leadership uh, to that council. And that's, that's an important legislative body. So you can see that we have a lot on our plate uh, uh, to discuss this evening. And we've got a great panel to discuss it with. I'm gonna begin introducing those folk and we're gonna begin with the state rep, the honorable state rep, from the 140, 114th district of uh, Illinois. She's uh, Latoya Greenwood. Now Greenwood is a, a familiar name. If you know anything about politics in the Metro East area, your father was a long time serving uh, president of uh, District 189 School Board. Um, also uh, we have with us uh, Michael Jones, uh, I'm, I'm introducing guys as I see them. Michael Jones, who's a former alder person from the 21st Ward. We grew up in that 21st Ward. Uh, and let's see, we've been joined by another former older person from the 21st Ward. We'll get to him uh, last. <laughs> He's last coming in. We'll get to him last. But Mike Jones, let me tell you a little bit about this guy. This guy, and I was going to save you for last, but Antonio kind of uh, disrupted those plans for me. I want to tell you a little bit about Michael Jones. Mike, uh, uh, you know, he was my next door neighbor. We were childhood friends. I I can't I can ever overlook that. But this guy's very very special. Michael Wesley Jones. He's an award winning political columnist with the St. Louis American newspaper, and he's also, as I said, a former twenty first ward alder person, and uh, he served as deputy mayor for to former St. Louis Mayor Clarence Harmon and senior advisor to St. Louis County's first and only African-American County Exec, Charlie Dooley. I want to welcome you, Mike, back to Tan Gaza. Good evening, good, hey. good to see you. Now, we have Antonio French, who's been kind enough to join us. We know that he's a busy man uh, over in North St. Louis and uh, he's a family man, but he's also a former uh, 21st Ward Alder. We have to talk about that too. I, I, because the three of us grew up in the 21st Ward. That that's for sure. French also comes from a political family. Mike and I both remember both of your parents, and uh, I, I used to enjoy many many conversations with your mother Myrtle and uh, and and your dad. We called him Frenchy, of course. That that that's for sure. He was a longtime uh, Democratic office holder in the city of St. Louis, also in the out of the 21st Ward, but it seems to me he represented the third for a while. Am I right? Well, those, no. those are actually my grandparents. Those that was your grandfather. Yeah, 
I'm sorry, are your grandparents, right? That shows you how old I am, right? I, I, I think they're your parents, right? But we, Mike and I both knew them well, that is for sure. So welcome. And, uh, you know, as I said, we're going to, uh, we're expecting uh, State Senator Brian Williams. Uh, he's back with this. Senator Brian Williams from St. Louis County. He represents the 14th uh, senatorial district, and that is indeed in St. Louis County. He's working his can off. He's actually still in session in Jefferson City. Welcome, all. We do appreciate you joining us for this regional approach to the many issues that are facing uh, African American communities in the St. Louis metropolitan area. As I said, we wanted to kick off our, our conversation with uh, the efforts on the part of the legislators to bring about much needed police reform. To that end, we're going to begin with the Honorable uh, State Representative Latoya Greenwood. Again, she represents the 114th district in, the, in Illinois, legislative district, and that covers Metro East. Good evening, uh, Representative uh, Greenwood. So pleased to have you with us this evening. Good evening and thank you. I'm honored to be here this evening um, amongst such great gentlemen. So, um, and I, like I said, um, before we started the show, I've been on many panels with Senator Williams. So I applaud all the work that he's doing over in the Missouri legislature. legislature. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about you guys, though, in, in, in Illinois. You've been busy in Springfield, and you're getting something done. That's mm -hmm. what's important. Talk to us about uh, your efforts toward police reform. Yes, sir. So we um, had a lame duck session, which was still a part of the 101st General Assembly. Um, and it happened in early January when we went back to session. And this was a package of bills and legislation that the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus had been working on really since individually for many years. But collectively, we came together after we were just overwhelmed with the murders, the consistent murders that were affecting Black people, George Floyd in particular, Breonna Taylor, Laquan McDonald, and more recently, the incident in Chicago with Anjanette Young. So we knew that um, we needed to do some things to eradicate systemic racism within our state. And so we divided, we came up with four pillars. And one of those pillars was criminal justice reform, health care, access and availability, education reform, and economic opportunity. And um, what we really don't hear a lot about, all, you know, there's a lot of news and press around the criminal justice reform uh, bill package, but the education reform bill was passed as well as the economic opportunity bill. We still have some additional work to do on the health care pillar, but we'll be handling that in the 102nd General Assembly. And so for the criminal justice reform, it was for us about rebuilding trust and placing accountability on police officers that serve the communities that we live in. And we heard um, numerous hours of uh, testimony from people who had experienced uh, the criminal justice system. We heard from law enforcement officials, we did um, many, many hours of subject matter hearings, both the Senate and the House side. And we came across statistics like um, the past year in 2020, there was 909, 994 Americans that had been killed during routine interactions with police. And the rate at which Black Americans were killed during police interactions was more than twice as high as those of white people. So we knew at that moment we needed to do something and do something that was very impactful for um, Black communities that we represent. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you all have really, really been busy and you've been productive. We're going to come back and talk more with you about that uh, no cash bail uh, bill. That is very, very important. Let's, uh, why don't we go to North County now, St. Louis. We'll hop across the river there and we'll speak with a dynamic young state senator, a young man that uh, I've done numerous interviews with on a couple of different platforms, a couple of different radio stations. And we're pleased to bring him in again, uh, Senator Brian Williams. As I said, he represents the 14th Centurial District in St. Louis County. That's the northern part of St. Louis County. Senator Williams, good evening. You've been busy in Jefferson City. You are busy as we sit and speak. Yeah, uh, first and foremost, um, Hank, I want to thank you for having me on as usual. You know, it's always great to, to come on and talk about pressing issues and things that are happening in our community and state. And then most importantly, it's great to be on with just such esteemed leaders. Um, every single one of you I've, I've had an opportunity to either spend time with or, or um be a, um, a a witness to your leadership. So it's, it's great to be on tonight. Well, it's great to have you. That's for sure. Well, tell us about tell us about your legislative efforts in Jefferson City. You have a, a, a taller tree to climb, so to speak, in that you have a Republican dominated uh, legislature, both the House and the Senate being, uh, you know, <laughs> multiple times majority to the Democratic. Uh, uh, efforts. So, but nevertheless, yeah. you're in their fight, you're in their swing and talk to us about your efforts. Yeah. Well, well, first, uh, I'm, I'm not fortunate to, to have, um, a legislature makeup as, as, uh, representative Greenwood, but, um, that still doesn't, um, dismiss the fact that I, I have to show up and advocate for our communities and, and our state. And, uh, one issue that I've, I've made a priority, um, last year, and, and it has clearly um, worked its way into this upcoming, this current session, is uh, police reform. Uh, basically, what we're hoping to do is, it's one, build the trust uh, between the community and, and law enforcement. Uh, we've all seen over uh, several decades, but, but clearly uh, more now than ever, uh, there's clearly distrust, and, and we have to figure out how to get that done. And it has to be done with um, really um, strategic uh, leadership and an approach that that really can resonate and, and really get to a, a place that we can get done here in Missouri, um, considering we do have a, a um, majority Republican uh, body. So, um, you know, I, it's clear that we need to address one thing, and, and that's the most important thing that we can do to make our streets safer in communities like the 21st Ward in, in North St. Louis. And even North St. Louis County is improve those relationships between officers and the communities that they serve. So we're focusing on common sense reforms like banning chokeholds in Missouri, requiring de-escalation training and uh, prohibiting unnecessary no knock arrest warrants. We also want to address uh, something that's really been a big issue in, in North County, and that's uh, police officers um, department hopping. So we want to provide a, a level of immunity to police chiefs and, and officers to be able to uh, disclose misconduct of, of um, their colleagues and, and officers who uh, are, are not doing the right thing and, and, and ultimately make sure that they're not in the uh, profession of, of police. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're, we're very happy where we are. Uh, we've been this uh, this bill has been the first and the only uh, Democratic bill that has been heard before a uh, committee and has been um, voted out of uh, the Judiciary Committee. Uh, clearly, we're at a place now where we're working through the process and, you know, we we, we have to meet everyone where they are. Um, we've been very fortunate to to get a stakeholder group that consists of um, members of law enforcement, the ACLU activists. And then we've even gotten bipartisan support. We've had, even in the state house, um, Representative Rasheen Aldrich has taken uh, pieces of my bill and have filed them as legislation in the state house. Uh, Republican Representative Shamed Dogan has done the same. So, you know, we have an opportunity to really be on the right side of this issue in Missouri, and we're gonna to continue to do everything we can to ensure that um, we restore the trust, which I believe is the very uh, foundation of public safety. Okay, we're going to pivot. I want to pivot, Mike. We're just going to borrow some of your uh, 
athletic vernacular, if we will, uh, State Senator uh, Brian Williams has to play both ends of the court because Missouri is a state, it seems to me, that the majority uh, Republican uh, uh, electorate or elected officials, they, they appear to be determined to not only hold the line, but move the state even further to the red column. You have written extensively about uh, all, all kinds of uh, political matters. And again, as I pointed out, you have such a great background, such an extensive career in politics. You, you, uh, you have credibility to speak to a whole lot of things. That is for sure. Your latest column, column rather, referred to the mayor's race. You, 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 you talked about the mayor's race, the importance of uh, the uh, quality and the character, the integrity, uh, the uh, political ability that the next mayor of the city of St. Louis uh, needs to have. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, uh, Hank, I, <clears throat> I'm going to ask for a bit of personal privilege, and i like to yield to Antonio okay. for, uh, for a I'll, specific I'll reason. I'm trying to punish, punish him a little bit for being late, man. <laughs> I feel like I'm being hazed here. Yeah, you don't no, mind. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't want to get uh, even, uh, 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 you Wait a minute. You were in my rotation even if you weren't in his, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. But here's what the last three, four articles that you have written have spoke to the other component of uh, crime and violence in the black community. And okay. that is uh, the non-system part of the non-police violence, but the, but the other kind of uh, 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 epidemic that is dealing with the community. And I'd like for you to talk about Mike, that Mike, for a moment. Mike. Excuse me, yep. you're stealing my thunder. <laughs> Do you, you're stealing my, don't you know that I got all of this lined up for Antonio? I got uh, a co-host. Okay. There's, there's your co-host. Co-host. You're talking about <laughs> systems. There is a little system going on here. Okay. Well, see, it, it, if we wasn't jazz musicians and we rehearsed, I'd have known that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Okay, Antonio, that's fine. I again you're twenty first former twenty first ward, older person, and uh you uh what are you doing in North St. Louis now? I know that you operate uh, some uh, community centers and, and what have you, aside from being an editorial writer with the uh, Post-Dispatch. Yeah, yeah. I own a few businesses uh, in the city. Um, unfortunately, like like everybody else, this pandemic has really uh, put a halt to a lot of our operations. Uh, as you mentioned, we have uh, you know two buildings that we converted into after-school centers for kids. Uh, that's not something that we can really operate right now. So they're kind of sitting empty until we can kind of figure out, uh, you know, what the next school year is going to look like. But North Campus hasn't gone anywhere. We'll, we'll be back for the kids when the kids are back. Okay, I understand. And, and, and again, uh, just a little reference to what Mike was saying. I, I, I don't, I haven't missed anything as it relates to you. I read your columns religiously, read your pieces, I should say, uh, religiously. And Mike is absolutely correct. You've spoken. I especially enjoyed the article that you wrote about the lack of planning. You know, we wring our hands. Mm. We've had these horrific murders that have involved children, you know, which is sort of a new phenomenon yeah. like, through our time. We, with something we never experienced. Guys shot guys. And that was, you know, sort of a commonplace, not, to, not as much maybe as it is now. But uh, the, it's like they've taken it up a notch now. Yeah. And it, there doesn't appear to be According to your columns, there doesn't appear to be a really, really sound response to that. No, and, and there's not really any kind of sense of urgency. You know, it's gotten to the point now. Uh, I mean, you guys remember if it was a, an outrageous crime, like a, a child being murdered in the middle of the day, uh, it, it'd be cause for outrage. There'd be press conferences, uh, you know, a special task force to track down the killer. Now it's just a Tuesday, you know, and, and we just move on. Um, and I think, you know, you talk about, um, you know, previous articles I wrote uh, talking about the lack of planning, uh, the lack of economic development in North St. Louis, the lack of concern on uh, the number of homicides and children being murdered. All that really just, it, it contributes to the low quality of life that African-Americans are experiencing in this city. And it, and it explains why so many are leaving 
in, in large numbers. Uh, black folks leaving North St. Louis is the number one driving factor of the population decline in St. Louis right now. Uh, if we care about keeping this city occupied and prosperous, we need to start caring about these neighborhoods uh, where people are leaving in large numbers because they're just sick and tired of it. Um, you know, there was an article in the Post-Dispatch uh, yesterday that uh, finally uh, some light is being shed on this situation that if you call 911, you get put on hold. You call 911 to report that a murder or a shooting or something is happening on your block and you get, you get put on hold for 15 minutes. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that is just driving people out of our city, man. And if we don't start looking at the root causes of uh, this exodus of African-Americans, uh, our, our city is just going to continue to die slowly. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. I would just want to respond to one uh, other aspect of that, uh, Antonio. The lack of cohesiveness, I guess you might say, with the public safety director, with the mm -hmm. mayor with the chief of police, with the police officers union. Aurora has said on these very airways, on this very platform, that uh, his chief of police has no plan to to actually, you know, do something about uh, the violent crime that's going on in the city. How can you hope to? Well, how can listen, you don't, don't have me up here agreeing with Aurora, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, right, but if there is a plan, I've seen no signs of it. Yeah, 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 and we've suffered for it. Now, Mr. Jones. Mr. Yeah, Jones. And, and, and the reason I wanted that is I wanted to tie this conversation together. Uh, both Representative Greenwood and Senator Williams talked about police reform, criminal justice reform, something that vexes the Black community. And we are victims of a, of a criminal system of justice much more than we are in a criminal justice system. But then you combine that with what Antonio has been addressing the last six or seven weeks, and he just did in his conversation, where the black community is also the victim of this epidemic of violence. So it seems that we are suffering from the worst of both parts of the spectrum on that. And I'm and, and this is more of a question because well, let me ask I'll you this, it. Mike. Let me ask you this question: Do you think that that hampers, uh, that has a has a negative impact on the ability of these legislators to get criminal reform done? Well, that's kind of what I want them to explore, because fundamentally, as for me, you guys are the emerging generation of black political leadership, thought leadership. Uh, policymakers, uh, even in your role, Antonio, as a uh, as as an editorial writer, and and you own all your own opinion. So, looking at it from your various perspectives, how do we combine solving both of those problems simultaneously? Because it's not an either or. It seems to me a both and kind of situation, and. As you look at your roles as legislators and, and, and as editorial writer, how how should how should black people be thinking about these two dual uh, problems that both have had tremendous negative impacts on the black community? Why don't we Why don't we throw that back to the uh, representative from Illinois? Let her begin. Let her respond to that. I'm well. I would um, start by saying that, um, first of all, we do have some police and police departments that have been able to operate in integrity and in doing the right thing for the communities that they serve. Um, another thing that we um, found in doing research and coming up with these pillars was just the overall effect that uh, COVID really has had on some, in many cases, the mental stability, um, highlighting the various disparities that we experience in our community specifically. And so when we talk about reform for police departments, we're talking about increase in training for police departments. We're talking about um, some victim services reforms for uh, victims of crime. And 
we have seen this uptick of violence while at the same time we're trying to push extreme packets of packages of police reform. Mm -hmm. It's a, um, it puts you in a situation where it's under co constant thought on how we're going to continue to evolve as communities. Mr. French said it best in that, um, you know, I live in East St. Louis. I represent, it's one of the communities that I represent. And we've seen a huge uh, number of uh, a population leave this area. And one of the reasons that they always point to is about safety, public safety, and that you feel safe in your community. So those are things that we are still trying to walk through and understand and how we can better address it mm -hmm. through hey, let me, let's, Okay. I, I'm sorry. I'd like to, I'd like to bring in... Uh, Senator Williams, and get his response to the same proposition. Rapid yeah, it's, it was some very good points that was made. And, and as I was listening to everyone, you know, the the, the word of, of the evening is, and, and really the world, the word of the of the century is, is accountability. And uh, accountability uh, within police departments is not a, a mutually exclusive to accountability uh, as, 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 um, um, an adult uh, making the decision. It, I mean, it's 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 different layers of accountability. And you know, when I'm talking about police reform, we're saying how do we figure out how to balance the scale for I mean, several years of of um, um, systemic racism and in in institutionalized um, um, standards that have that have really plagued our our communities, our region, and our state in unprecedented ways. And then you look and you say, hey, look what's happening in our communities. So when I talk about police reform, I, I talk about it really from a, a, a holistic perspective. I say, hey, look, if we start having better practices within our police department, and just let's speak for my space, if we're able to put someone take a, 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 a role of leadership when it comes to policing, and then ultimately use that as, as really cover for local government to really take a stand and hold their police departments accountable. And then we start figuring out how do we start weeding out these bad folks, giving cover to good police officers, and then ultimately encouraging people from the community to trust the police department. And then hopefully one day you got young black um, men and women that actually want to be police. Yeah. And then that's how you really start to tackle it. But to go even further, in North St. Louis County, that's the largest population of black people in the state. And to think that, uh, and Antonio talked about something, folks are leaving North St. Louis City. Um, when the census come out sometime this summer, I would argue that the population in the city of St. Louis would be closer to 250,000 and 300,000. I would argue that that census would reflect that St. Louis City is probably 50%, if not a little bit more white than it is black. So we have so many things that we have to really look at in, a, in a really an unprecedented situation before we even talk about the pandemic on how do we not only convince the community to trust the police, but also encourage people from our community to want to join the force and actually be police officers. You see my that. uncle, one, one more thing, Hank, before I finish. Please. My uncle, who uh, served 27 years with the St. Louis City Police Department, um, had every intention of going 30 years, but the reason he did not is because my my aunt was terrified whether or not he would make it home safe at night. She's like, look, we done because it's too much stuff happening. It's too much violence. She's worried about his life and uh, he retired. Uh, so, you know, this is this is a, a, a if it was easy, everybody would do it. But I would tell you right now uh, what I'm hoping to accomplish at the state level is really um get to a place to where we have some some uniform things in place to where I can go back to St. Louis and say, hey, what are you doing with your police departments? We need to have local leaders that are holding them accountable. And honestly, in St. Louis, you know, it's not a Democrat or Republican issue anymore. I mean, you got Democrats that that are afraid to speak up and say, look, we got problems in our police department or, hey, we're not doing anything to tackle crime or, you I'm know, sure. and, and, we, and we're letting these and, and as elected officials, one thing I refuse to do, look, I I, I'm fortunate and blessed to to know smart people so where I don't have to uh, pretend like I know something I don't know anything about and I can actually call people and talk to them. 
we got a lot of elected officials today who, uh, one, don't understand the importance of leadership, but then don't have anybody to talk to when it comes to getting to the, the facts and, and understanding um, really serious issues that impact um, the people that they serve and represent. Okay, thank you, uh, Senator, Senator Williams. Am I still on? Am I hearing my mic here right? I'm not. Okay. And up here, I guess up here Hank, I guess they I call I... them, they, up in the legislature, they call it term limits. <laughs> oh, is that what they call it, term limits? Okay. But, uh, Mike, I do want to get you in here on the important. Okay. All of this ties into the next one. Excuse me. Who that who, who that mayor might be, uh, whether it's a he or a she, it doesn't matter. He or she, Antonio, is going to have to confront this thing head on. As you said, uh, the, the the crime piece is so large, so large in St. Louis City. That person, and 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 when you couple that with the crisis in the St. Louis public schools, he or she will really have a mess on their hands. Yeah, uh, Hank. Uh, uh, the reason I wanted to tie. I want to hear from them on this issue because it's all part of this that large mosaic. Well, Mike, I got to ask you this: Why did yeah. you was why did you presume that you were not going to hear from them on those issues? That's why well, they, I had a question. Man. You okay, know, that's okay. But but remember this. But you got you got three brilliant people who are uh, who are three? emerging. I thought we got four this. here. Wait, 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 they have real responsibility. Yeah. I wanted to hear from them about a question that I had. That you had. And I'm going to use that, their answers to pivot to the question that you asked me. Okay, so, so that I should have had you last. Because I man, hope, has a plan. I, he has a plan. Hopefully, I, hopefully I would have had those questions. I mean, I spent a lot of time putting a lot of stuff down here. I think I included everything, in fact, too much. I yeah, see okay. that now because hey, Tom, probably, Tom Brady beat Pat Mahomes for a reason, Hank. Yeah, yeah. There's a system. <laughs> there's a system. There has to be a system to this, anyway. Uh, but nevertheless, it's, I, I, I think all of the points are well taken and 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 well made. I see that uh, we probably put too much on the plate for one session. That is for sure. We haven't talked about COVID. Ten million people, I think, have been, uh, or ten percent mm. of the country has been vaccinated. I wonder what that number is in the African American community. It's I know it's not ten percent. I'm sure of that. That is for sure. But and and with the the two legislators, the, the police chases. I just lost a nephew in Bell Fountain neighbors. The guy's doing a hundred miles an hour. Kills him on impact. He's just in a car. Just 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 in a car as an innocent bystander. So much of it needs to. You probably saw it on the front page of your of your newspaper there, uh, Antonio French. But Mr. Jones, please bear with yes, me just a little bit. Talk to us about the mayor's race. We all okay. understand how that all connects, but I want you to talk specifically about the mayor's race, please. Okay, and here would, here, here, here would be the point that, here's, here would be the point that I would make, that the piece that I wrote this week was really about the key, the difference between being somebody good versus successful. And that ultimately, when you're looking at this, you're really looking at the intangibles that a person brings to the job that will allow them to make the adjustment when the circumstances that they could not have predicted show up, okay? And so for me, uh, uh, I would argue that all four people running uh, uh, for mayor don't have a clue about what the job is because it's like being president of the United States. You don't know till you actually have to sit your butt in the seat and then all the stuff happens and what none of the stuff that happens part of what you planned. But that's what you kind of kind of like this podcast, kind of like this podcast. Yeah, right. but, I mean, yeah. But, I had but, to throw but, that but, one. But, but, but the reality. Yeah. Please. What I was speaking to is for the community to start looking at what are the qualities that somebody has to bring to that kind of circumstance to have a chance of surviving. And I talked about intelligence, but I wasn't talking about academic intelligence. I was talking about political intelligence. Like uh, Brady got a great football IQ. If you're going to be the mayor, you need a political IQ. Okay, you have to understand the game. You have to understand the circumstances you're going to be confronted with. Is there a candidate? And, is there one of the one of the current candidates I, uh, that you uh, think uh, might uh, have uh, that? Yeah, Hank, I'm like John Wicks. I'm not working, so you won't hear me. Uh, <laughs> well, 
<laughs> so, so you're not gonna hear me give an answer to that. Okay. I just okay. I just but, I just wanted you talked about these qualifications but, that we all but, agree. But, but, so, but that's so I'm giving I'm giving you the benefit of my judgment about what you're supposed to look at. Okay. When you when you make that draft pick. But the other thing though, is, is I talked about integrity, and I don't mean integrity like or your honors or uh, and did you go to Sunday school, but integrity the way engineers talk about in terms of a building or a bridge. Will it hold up? Does it do what it's supposed to do? Can, are you at that point? Are you reliable? Like, uh, can you keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you? But mm -hmm. the last and most important, I said, is political skill. For an elected executive, and you talking to former legislators here, two active and one former. Sure. That an elected executive without political skill will not be able to function. And uh, 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 the key to success is not intelligence, it's not even integrity, it's political skill. Mm -hmm. Nothing compensates for a lack of political skill. Political skill can compensate for a lack of a whole lot of other qualities. So one of the things you should be Especially trying Especially in St. Louis to, City, former government. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, 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 so one of the things you should be trying to figure out is who has the skill package politically to do this. And, and, and most of the time people say uh, politics is like chess and not checkers and they're right, but they're right for the wrong reasons. Uh, it's not because you have to think four or five moves ahead. It's that in a checkers game, all the pieces are equal. I want to go over to and Mr. French. And, and, now, and, and, and politics is just like chess in that all the pieces have different values. They all do different things. They have it. And what piece may be important in any particular situation is a function of your strategy for playing the game. So I'm just trying to elevate the conversation of how you evaluate the talent who's asking to be the next mayor of the city of St. Louis. And that person will have to have the intellectual curiosity to deal with all the complexity and nuance that uh, 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 these three uh, 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 folks have just laid out for you, mm -hmm. just on one issue like crime. And right. Let me. I need to. I need to bring Mr. French in here. He's also a candidate, 2016 candidate for uh, for the office of mayor of uh, the city of St. Louis. And then before we get out of here, I want to make sure Miss Greenwood uh, speaks to the importance of that particular position to what she does in her region. Uh, we're looking at things in a regional perspective uh here this evening but let's begin with you mr french you uh you react to what mr jones has, has laid out and tell us how to accomplish that in your opinion you see what i'm saying yeah. how, how do we get that message that mike has so eloquently shared with us how do we get that to the average everyday voter how do how do we get that to them yeah that, that's a tough one you know like, as in as in most things, when I talk to Mr. Jones, it's tough, Mr. French. But if we don't do it, then what he says doesn't doesn't matter. Well, he's he's those, right on. That, that that is what is needed. Um, you know, it, it's not a problem that's exclusive to St. Louis. It, it, it's just the nature of politics in in twenty right. Uh, twenty one right now. Um, it's, it's how we got Trump. You know, we we keep uh we we have the wrong uh process to elect people for these positions. If we have a clown show, we're going to elect a clown. That's how we got Trump. OK, if it's a clown contest, you're going to get a clown. Uh, and so the questions that we are, it seems like we are asking, you know, who is uh, I, I wrote something in a column uh, a couple of weeks ago. It, it's not who is the best fighter, you know, who is a fighter. You know, ideally, they're all fighters. That's why they're they're in this in this contest. It's about who is winning, <laughs> you know, who can who can win. And in this system, uh, it, it is about who can build the best coalition. Uh, it's a coalition form of government that we have, basically. The only way you're going to be able to uh, get something done is if you have allies and if you're able to sit down with your, you know, once enemies uh, and, and put together a plan and get people to help you. Um, you know, you know, as, as well as anybody else, is that in city government, um, a lot of people don't have power to do anything, but they got enough power to stop you from doing something. Okay, So you got to be able to work uh, with a broad uh, community and, and to be able to get something done. Now, as far as citizens and voters, uh, I was a candidate in the 2017 race, uh, and the most disappointing thing in that race was not my uh, not my loss, but the fact that so few people came out to vote. 
Um, and and if you, well, Mr. Fritz, we, let me let me let me jump in there because I want to say that's the the elephant in the room. You're talking man. about a you're talking about a constituency that is 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 not stable. It's moving around. It's not like the days when we were uh, involved in politics and your family, your grandparents were, where you had strong ward systems and you could go deliver information, Brian, Mrs. Greenwood, to those organizations and 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 what have you and expect the, the correct response. But we don't have that anymore. So what you have, the stable folk are the white folk in South St. Louis, for the most part, and in the Central Corridor over. Well, well, you might say the most the most stable. The most stable. Turnout the most wasn't stable. great over there either. Uh, what mm -hmm. you have is just this apathy uh, in the city. Uh, and, and ultimately, what the next mayor is going to have to do is be somebody who inspires folks to get involved and to give a damn again about the city. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think what you're also seeing right now in this mayoral contest, I would say, is that um, you've seen apathy kind of spread to the business community a little bit. They kind of are sitting this one out, it seems like, uh, you know, they don't seem to have like a clear candidate. You know, obviously, you know, they were supportive of Slade throughout his whole, uh, his many terms. Uh, and then that kind of translated to Lida uh, in the last run. But this one, I don't know. I, I'm hearing a lot among the business community, a frustration with the city. I mean, the, the most visible has been the, uh, the CEO of Centene uh, and his very public comments about how you know, he is really becoming discussed it with how this region, not just the city, but the region uh, is acting. And, uh, you know, and the dysfunction that used to be limited to St. Louis City, at least publicly, has now spread to St. Louis County as well. I wanted that, to, I wanted that executive to some of that, that I really wanted to get some of that in here, Woo. too, because that's an important legislative body. Make no I mean, the 28 uh, knuckleheads that we got downtown in the city of St. Louis, they get all of the headlines. But that six people, that seven people out there on that county council, they got some muscle to get some things done. Ms. Greenwood. Let me tell you, anybody that thought that uh, reducing the size of the Board of Aldermen was going to lead to better government needs to look at the small <laughs> county council out in St. Louis County. That is that's not pretty, a guarantee pretty, of a more efficient government. That's pretty good. Listen, we, we're down to our last few minutes. Uh, uh, Ms. Green, how important to you and to what you want to accomplish in the Metro East is the office of mayor of the city of St. Louis? I think that um, we could work very well regionally in getting some things done. We are right across a bridge, like minutes away. You're in your, you're in your third ter term. Do you have reason to believe that that will happen? Has it happened? Can you tell me real quickly, please? Um, it hasn't happened as far as I know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, but I look forward to it happening. <laughs> okay, you it would be it would uh, certainly help your efforts to, yes. to uh, bring some uh, relief to your communities too. Yes. Brian, how important is that mayor's office to you? What do you think? What do you think? It's very, important? it's very important. And you know, I I wrote an op-ed and I was talking to to uh, Mike Jones about it, and I'm not sure who I read it, but you know, I I used a couple symbolic things like Washington Park Cemetery and the airport. You know, to see Kenlock and Berkeley and communities like that have parcels from the city of St. Louis and to think that we could potentially and I, I don't want to say we we will or, or or even speak to what the candidates know or don't know. But I would argue that there's a lot of folks who uh, are elected to city offices and have never been to St. Louis County or never spent any time in Kenlock or Berkeley and don't realize that the city of St. Louis has an investment there. So I would challenge the next mayor to be someone who really builds city county relations, takes more of a regional approach. And then, you know, I, I think that we have to remember uh, one thing I've learned from my uh, folks around me and my political circle. And Mike and I've talked about this a lot is politics is about addition, not subtraction. And we almost got uh, politicians who volunteer to to make their circle smaller than to expand it and really have people a part of what they're doing. So I hope the next team. mayor is more focused on building a true coalition and not only when it's convenient. Okay. Listen, I want to thank all of you all. You all were a great panel. Mike, I guess we should have had a game plan uh, going in. Next time I'll give you a call, Coach, and make sure that you know <laughs> what my strategy is. Okay? But you listen, you guys are great. I, I share Mike's uh, sentiments about uh, – 
the youth, the vitality, the fact that, uh, you know, our future's in pretty good hands when we have folk like you, uh, you know, uh, involved in politics and making things happen, things that you know are the right things to do. But you got to you got to keep it real, though. You can't you cannot pretend like like, um, you know, certain issues matter when they're convenient. I mean, you got to be steadfast and consistent around these things. And I think we got some we got some politicians, especially some black ones that's playing a game and that needs to stop. Well, Mr. French, and I'll say this and we're going to have to get out of here. But I think you hit it on the point. We got guys who just simply don't. They're not in that mix. They're not in that. They're not feeling that pain that these folks are feeling they're not in it. They, they have Teflon, if you will. Uh, they just, they just don't know. They go about business as usual. We used to call that status quo type folk. You know, just want to be elected. Uh, uh, want to be elected. Uh, Mike, let work. As, as, as we head out, I, 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 I'll put a, a tag on or uh, a little icing on what Brian and everybody has just said that we don't have a structural problem in St. Louis. We have a talent problem that you don't, we, we are not getting things not getting done because the structure is inefficient and all of that is true. That's but a sad reality. Players, but if you got players who can make plays, they overcome bad coaching. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I... uh, uh, but, and we just don't have enough players. I mean, the, 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 the literal fact is if you had more people, I would say, take your show tonight and say, this is the level of talent that it needs, that needs to be in government to represent you. Anybody that doesn't look like these three, cut them, okay? I don't <laughs> care, you know, you tell, them, you tell them go sell popcorn if they want to see the game or whatever. But no, you don't get a uniform. Don't worry about when practice is. Yeah. I don't Mike, want to see you. Mike, we got to get out. Mrs. Greenwood, I would like to really give you the <laughs> last word, if I possibly could. It's, the conversation is, is stimulating. Make no mistake about it. And, and one thing that we pointed out, the, the, the common bond that we have uh, as an ethnic group that transcends wherever, whatever boundaries that are in front of us, behind us, or between us, uh, the issues are still the same. Police reform, crime in our cities, COVID relief, uh, economic development, and, and what have you. And as Mike says, uh, the lack of the dearth, I like that word, of talent is, 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 is scary. It's scary. Ms. Greenwood, I'll give you the last word, please. I just want to say thank you for having me this evening. And I look forward to coming back. Oh, well. And to talk about more of the pillars that we're pushing as a Illinois Legislative Black Caucus and different legislation that I'm proposing to create access to quality health care. Well, so wanna, thank you for having me. I want to say this. We look forward to having you. The Metro East region is uh, such a big part of this whole this whole St. Louis metropolitan area. Uh, there, there are tens of thousands of African-Americans that reside in the Metro East area, and they all have things to offer, and they can make this uh, uh, a better place for all of us, uh, Brian and, and, and Bell Fountain neighbors and whatever. And again, I would urge both of you to, to focus something on these police chases. It doesn't happen in Ladue, Chesterfield. It doesn't happen in affluent neighborhoods. These guys drive through our communities, densely populated related communities and it kills people too i want to thank you all i want to thank kdhx for allowing me this opportunity mike i'll tell you this we will have a better game plan next time okay we won't try to accomplish so much but you all are a great panel mr french i am a big my touches man i don't i'm not complaining <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i know i understand that i uh, i really enjoyed all of you all you you you, you all bring something i'm long in the tooth now along with Mr. Jones. He'll tell you that I'm the older, but it was actually he. And uh, you, you look at the hair. I don't have any, so I shaved off the proof. But I want to thank all of you. I wish you, uh, we could have a better news on a Black History Month, but it just seems to go on and on and on. But nevertheless, we got guys like yourselves that are in the struggle, and, and that is important. And Mike, I, Mike hit that one on the head. He knocked that one out of the park. With representation, of this sort, we, we got a chance. We got a chance to make some good and do some good. That is for sure. State Senator 
Brian Williams, my man from 14th District, St. Louis County. Thank you so very much. Antonio French, former 21st Ward Alderman. You're writing some, hey man, some, some hell of a columns here, some hell of a pieces. I'm, I read them all. I'm not kidding with you. I'm sorry we didn't get more time to talk about the, uh, the white progressives. That's not a, a, a issue. That uh, the lack of perceived, I say perceived lack of uh, of respect. Uh, that was a doozy in St. Louis County that they pulled. I'm not kidding with you. <laughs> Representative Greenwood, as I said, uh, this is the first of many discussions that I hope to have with you. We got to kind of bring this whole family together, if you will. Mike Jones, I'll never do another show without talking with you first, okay? I don't know what <laughs> I've been doing for 40 years. Thank you, KDHX, uh, Andy Coco. Shout out to my daughter, uh, Susan Thompson, for the encouragement that she gives my son, Christian Thompson. And uh, hey, everybody be safe. The weather's bad. And uh, we'll talk to you.